ways it's not like the crib service we normally have but in a few very important ways it is you've taken part we've got your pictures and we've got your singing and also we've got a really special story the story that's part of our crib service every year the very first christmas story Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help us and to help his people just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down. Seas would have roared. Trees would have clapped their hands, but the earth held its breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in. And when no one was looking in the darkness, he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. One morning, this girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there he was gabriel and he was an angel a special messenger from heaven when she saw the tall shining man standing there mary was frightened you don't need to be scared gabriel said God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see perhaps if he was talking to, to someone else. Mary, Gable said, and he laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy. You will call him Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one. He's the rescuer. The God who flung planets into space and kept them whirling around. The God who made the universe with just one word. The one who could do anything at all. Was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait. God was sending a baby to rescue the world. This is all too wonderful, Mary said. And she felt her heart beating hard. But, but, uh, how can this be true? Is there anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than her eyes could see, and she believed. I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. And sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now, Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem. But when they reached the little town, they found that every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeeper told him. There isn't any place for you here. Where would they stay? 
and soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there in the stable, amongst the chickens, the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born. His baby son. And Mary and Joseph, they, they wrapped him up in a warm, soft bed of straw. They used the animal's feeding trough as a cradle, and they gazed, gazed in wonder at God's great gift. Wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying there in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus. Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because of course, he had. the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted the heavens, this one shone clearer. It blazes in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born. To be like a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops he sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He put a special star in the sky to show where the boy was. And now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. Here he is. He's come. Go and see him. 
my little boy. Now, where would you send your splendid choir? Hmm. To a big concert hall, maybe? Or, or a palace, maybe? Or, God sent his to a little hillside outside a little town. In the middle of the night, he sent those angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them rude names. Hmm. You see, people, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God, hmm, he must have thought shepherds were very important indeed because they are the ones he chose to tell the good news first. That night, they were out in the open fields, warming themselves by the campfire, <laughs> when suddenly the sheep well, they started darting. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? A wing beat. They all turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright, shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He is sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud. Except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels. Troops and troops and troops of angels armed with light. And they were singing, singing a beautiful Glory to God, to God, to be fame and honour in the highest. Then, as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. Well, the angels, the, 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 the shepherds, the shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep hill and raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble street, through the courtyard, down some steps, steps past the inn, round the corner, through the hedge, until at last they reached the tumble down stable. They just caught their breath and then quietly they tiptoed inside. They knelt on the dirty floor. They had heard about this promised child. And now here he was. He was here, heaven's son. The maker of the stars. A baby sleeping in a mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright shining star in the sky at night. A light to light up the whole world. Chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine.
far away in the east, three clever men saw the very same star. The star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign. A baby king had been born. They had been waiting for the star. They knew it would come. He's here! At dawn, they packed up their camels, wrapped gifts for the baby, and brought their most precious treasures of all. Frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Special, sparkly, lovely smelling, gleaming things. Just right for a king. The three wise men, actually, if you met them, you thought they were kings because they were so rich and clever and important looking. They set off. They rode their camels across endless deserts, up steep mountains, down deep valleys, over grassy plains, night and day and day and night for hours and hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months and months and months until at last they reached Jerusalem. Jerusalem was by far the most important city for miles around and anyone can tell you that that's where a palace would be, and kings are born in palaces. So that's where they went, but they were in for a surprise. They went to see King Herod. And surely he knows where this baby was, but he didn't. In fact, he didn't like the sound of a new king. In fact, it made him very cross. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisors told the three wise men what God had said about the baby king, go to Bethlehem. That's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started to move again, showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star. Out of the big city, along the road, into a little town of Bethlehem. They followed the star through the streets of Bethlehem, out of the nice part of town, through the not so nice part of town, down a little dirt track, until it stopped right over a little house. But wait, this, this wasn't a palace. There weren't any guards or servants or flags or, or red carpet or trumpets or anything. Did they get it wrong? Was this what God meant? And sure enough, in that little house there, sitting on his mother's knee, they found him, the baby king. The three wise men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns and they bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave their sparkling treasures. The journey that had begun so many centuries before had led the three wise men here to a little town, to a little house, to a little child, to the King God had promised all those years before. 
But this child, uh, this child was a, a new kind of king. Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss. He had come to be a servant. And that servant would grow up to do so much for all mankind. But that is a story. In fact, it's many, many, many stories for another time. Thank you for joining us. (laughs) And have a very, very Merry Christmas.